Today, I'm flying America's newest luxury flying experience, JetBlue Mint, in both their studios and suites, offered exclusively on board their Airbus A321s. Every seat features directile access with fully closing doors, extensive dining options, comfortable bedding, and a price tag of around $2,000. It's almost in a league of its own when looking at the US competition. Well, almost. I've discovered several things which make this experience a little less exclusive exclusive, as we'll explore in a second. So let's head to Los Angeles and experience the complete JetBlue adventure, as I'll be reviewing both of the new Mint products on the same flight. Have they just launched a marketing gimmick, or is it actually a competitive and disruptive business class? Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. You join me today at Los Angeles International Airport where I'm gonna be trying out JetBlue's brand new Mint product. So without any more to say, let's head straight into the airport and go and check in for my flight. Hey, how's it going? Uh, to New York. Well, you're ready for me, please? Yeah, I'll get that now. Right, sorry about that. So much stuff. I think I'm on the wrong line. So much, appreciate it. Right then, all checked in. Got seat 1F today, which may give away the game. Of course, you've seen already. I'm going to be trying out the studio, which is only in the first row of Mint. Quite interested to see what it's going to be like today. The thing you have to remember is that JetBlue throughout the US is largely a, a coach or economy airline. So, when they offer their mint product, that's only on a select few of their routes, which is of course what we're doing today. Now for the arduous task of waiting in an endless TSA queue. Thankfully, the blow is somewhat softened as JetBlue Mint is part of the priority queue. That said, it took around 15 minutes. Right, all through TSA, goodness me. It is never easy, is it? It's always a nightmare. This is the one thing I noticed from the amount of travel that I do over here in the US. I need to sort myself out with TSA free. At some point I will do that, it just makes sense. But anyway, all through now, now I've got to work out what to do. Point with JetBlue's uh, premium product is it doesn't come with a lounge. So this flight today cost me well over a thousand dollars and not having a lounge, it doesn't really sit that well with me if I'm honest with you. That's the same case for their more international flights as well, so the ones over to London. Talking of London, I actually got the chance to go to the launch event of the inaugural London Gatwick flight. This gave me the chance to meet JetBlue's COO, Joanna Garrity, who explained how the new Mint product is intended to disrupt the transatlantic premium market with a focus on price and quality. I'm interested what this means though, as looking across the next few months, you'll be lucky to get changed for $4,000 on one of these flights. Back in LA, it's time to take the no lounge situation into my own hands. Let's head over to the Tom Bradley terminal in an effort to find a lounge that will have me. Oh dear, we've got some bad news. The Centurion lounge is closed. Which may mean this whole idea of going to the across the other side of the airport to find somewhere to chill out in is a complete waste of time anyway let's see if there's any other option for us here so after another 10 minutes of searching i think it's time i accept my fate well it looks like i'm gonna have to make my own lounge um right given it's been a bit of a failure coming over to the tom bradley terminal uh, it's still a nice walk and it's something to do but it is something to bear in mind if you are flying on at JetBlue and you're paying out for that ticket no lounge, depends how much you value your ground service. If you're someone that just wants to hop straight on the plane, completely understandable. However, if you do like to spend a bit of time at the airport, but you've got all the big three that do Transcon, that do provide you with a lounge. But I have a suspicion that on board is gonna make up for the lack of ground service. And just like that, we're back in Terminal 5. We are gate 50, I can see it just over here. You can tell from the busyness, US domestic travel is very much back to normal. Let's take a look at our jet today then. Currently being loaded, ready for departure. Introducing the brand new Airbus A321neo. Thankfully, I don't have that long to wait and boarding begins imminently. I'm among the very first to get on board. Mint is of course, group one. Right, all ready to get on board. Let's go and find out what this is like. The ah, brand new Mint. Ah, Okay, <laughs> the brand new mint business class. Let's go and see what it's like. It's getting real. Since the announcement of this product earlier this year, I've been desperate to experience this in flight. 
I'm welcomed on board into a dreamy blue lit cabin and after stowing my bags, it's time to settle into my studio, one lima. And crikey, the size of these seats, it's really impressive. You'll notice the interesting seating position facing diagonally away from the window. I know no pre-departure drinks today, which is a shame. Boarding continues swiftly and it's not long before a manual safety demo is done and we begin to push back from stand. Taxi today took forever and as a result, we're rather delayed in departure. I don't mind though, as I love watching all the various departures and general hubbub of LAX. Finally, we lift off into the Californian afternoon sunshine, skimming over the skyline of Los Angeles. Today's flight will take roughly five and a half hours over a distance of 4,000 kilometers. It's a pretty rapid climb today. I guess the pilot is trying to make up some time and service begins promptly. I retract my tray table and I'm served my initial drink and snack. I'm presented with these cheese straws, which are pretty Moorish and well presented in this golden bowl. I went for an unorthodox iced coffee, something I feel JetBlue do really well. However, if you want something a bit stronger, there's always the infamous JetBlue cocktail menu to keep you entertained. Talking of menus, here's today's food selection. JetBlue do in-flight food a little different to what you'll be used to. It's kind of like tapas. You can choose any three options out of the five offered. A concept I really like as it encourages you to try new things. After around 20 minutes, my selection of food is served. Let's unwrap my metal cutlery, yes, thankfully no plastic in sight here, and get cracking. First up is the chopped salad with chorizo. This was fresh, tasty, and went down a treat. Next up, I selected the burrata served with zucchini, pine nuts, basil, and mint. I could have done two, it was that good. And lastly, to ensure I have some hot food, I selected the chicken caca to your goodness, how do I say that? It was of course delicious. For my dessert, I'm delighted to be served gelato, complete with preserved blackberries and almond crunch. I've got to say, for US domestic, I'm totally blown away by this. Stellar work, JetBlue. With dinner service out of the way, let's head to the loo for a review. There's only one business class loo at the front of the cabin. I had my reservations about this, having just one loo for all mint passengers, but it turned out to be absolutely fine. Right, so the loo is clean, but not stocked with any premium amenities. I can't say it's really much difference to an economy bathroom, but hey, it does the job, I guess. Let's head back to my studio, and back at the seat, it's time to get those Tims off, as we need to transform this space into a bedroom. As you'll see, at the touch of a button, the seat folds out into a fully flat bed. Ordinarily, there would be a further pop out to create an extra large bed space, but this seemed to be broken unfortunately. Comfortable tuft and needle bedding is provided, well a duvet like blanket and a soft fluffy pillow, and these are of high quality. Now, before I experience the bed, let's go and check out the other product within the mint cabin, the suite, which is quite different. As you can see, around half the size in footprint and facing two away from the window. Yes, it's tighter, but still has the illusion of privacy, a good enough space to relax in. Though I do find it a shame it faces away from the window. You'll see there's a nifty wireless phone charger by the window, which is a great touch. Back to the rest of the suite, the legroom is fantastic. There's plenty of room to stretch out here. Your seat controls are located to your right, along with a convenient reading light. The TV folds out from the console and adjusts quite freely, allowing for a comfortable viewing angle even if you're reclining. Your tray table folds out cleanly, but does trap you in somewhat once it's out, unlike the studio. Okay, what about the bed? At the touch of a button, you can recline to a fully lay flat position. The soft leather is comfy and the seat's footprint grants enough width for a comfortable side sleeping position. I'd happily fly a red eye transcon or indeed transatlantic in this suite. Okay, let's head back to my studio. Don't you see the significant difference in space between the two? Let's get settled into the bed then and shut the door. Unfortunately, it seems pretty flimsy and actually almost totally broke earlier in the flight. Laying down the sense of space is truly unparalleled in business class. It's comparable only to the double Q-suite. Super impressive. 
one hour later. After a brief nap, I awoke to a handwritten note, along with some chocolate cashews. These are delicious, I think you can buy them in Walgreens, though alas, not in the UK. I washed these down with some sparkling water. Right, I thought it'd be useful to show you guys some of the quirks of this studio. First up, the buddy dine feature. You can invite a lucky friend or partner to dine with you. There's this separate tray table and even a seat belt in case of turbulence. In practice, I'm unsure if you'd actually use this, but it's a great option to have. There's also a sizable closet space, which I value. Too many airlines forget how important stowage space is in these premium cabins. And lastly, there's wireless charging here, as there were in the suites. However, it didn't seem to be working. My phone remained uncharged. Anyway, with just a few minutes until we come into land into JFK, I'll get my seatbelt on and enjoy the views of Final Approach over New York. So, is it worth it? From my experience, yes it is. The new Mint product represents a competitive, well thought out product with quirky features. I think it will resonate well with leisure travellers, especially on the transatlantic routes. I wonder if the lack of lounges may put some travellers off, especially those more business focused, and given the initial intentions of competing on price, we'll need this to drop significantly below 4k a ticket for transatlantic in order to do this. But hey, let me know what you think down below. Have you flown this product yet? And if not, would you? Right guys, welcome to New York JFK Airport. What a wonderful flight and a nice surprise to see JetBlue's new product. Uh, as good as I expected it to be. A uh, couple of shortcomings as we've discussed, but overall a really good flight. Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure today and I'll catch you guys all again next week.